right now with news you can use, I was going to talk a little bit about, about some specific uh, markets uh, today, but some news has preempted that. Um, specifically, we're going to talk about Zillow. Zillow, uh, there were on Monday, just to give you the high line view, on Monday, Zillow stopped buying houses. Zillow is one of the largest home buyers in the country, along with Open Door and a couple of others like that. Uh, Zillow put the brakes on uh, Monday, not buying any more homes for the rest of the year at a minimum. They may not buy into early next year. Um, and just to show you how goofy the, the news is out here and what's going on, I'm going to read you three headlines from three different news networks about why Zillow stopped buying homes. First one, Zillow slams the brakes on home buying as it struggles to manage its backlog of inventory. All right. Number two, labor and supply shortages prompt Zillow to stop buying homes through 2021. And the third one, is Zillow's plunging stock price a warning about the housing market? So this stuff is all over the board. We don't know exactly why Zillow has stopped, but there is a reason. Um, they bought about 3,800 homes during the second quarter of last year. And if the numbers I believe uh, that I'm reading correctly here, they made about $170 million um, in fees, profits, et cetera, during that same period of time. So they should be very profitable from buying homes and then selling them, but there's there's something else going on. We don't know exactly what it is. Now, uh, we talked last week or a couple of weeks ago now about the fact that most people are saying, you know, we've got as many as 4 million homes short. In other words, we need 4 million more homes to, to satisfy the current housing demand. Then I read you an article two weeks ago today about an economist who says we've got 6 million homes too many. So there's some place in there is a 10 million home swing. Um, just this week, the talking heads have come out and they are really talking about the fact that um, home prices, they, in, in some cases here, they're expecting home prices to go up in 2022. Now, you know, we're not looking at that. We're, we're looking at the numbers out there and we think that they're going to be dropping. But let me tell you what the other side of the, uh, the, the fence is saying. Um, I'm going to give you quotes. And this is an article about Goldman Sachs. Um, how high do they predict the home prices will go in 2022? The bottom line, Goldman Sachs is saying double digit increases again next year. Specifically, they think, and, they, and these guys are the most far out there in terms of price increases, they think that home prices will soar 16% in 2022. That's significantly more than any year we've ever had, including the last one, for home price increases. Um, along with them, we've got other talking heads out there. Uh, and let me find this link here and I'll tell you what, um, what we've got. The John Burns real estate consulting business, along with Freddie Mac, are forecasting home price growth between 4 and 5.3% next year. CoreLogic, uh, which is a, the largest real estate data firm, is forecasting a 2.2% uptick in U.S. home prices. And um, Zillow themselves are predicting 13.6% appreciation in home values. Now that's over the next 12 months. They've come back and said they only expect that to be about 9%. But there's as many people talking about a price decrease in the next 12 months now as there are an increase. So we are, we've got, in, in the 22 years I've been in this business, I've never seen such a diverse uh, spread of opinions on this thing. Is the market gonna go up dramatically? Is it gonna drop dramatically? Or what's gonna happen? Um, so, a lot of this depends on, and my prediction, as I, as I mentioned before, it is all dependent on the cost of capital. So if home loans continue to be cheap for the average person out there, in other words, as long as our Fed uh, and Treasury Department keep printing money and buying it themselves, interest rates will remain low. If rates remain low, prices will go up. If interest rates even hint 
that they're no longer going to stay low. In other words, if there's a any kind of a rise or even a the, the rumor of a rise in interest rates, I think that's going to plug up the market. Um, I've never also seen anything like this. We're, we're finding hyper locality differences in markets, even within a zip code. We're seeing things where part of a zip code, maybe the lower priced homes in a zip code are not moving. The higher priced homes are not moving, but the middle is moving. Uh, other areas we're seeing the high end homes uh, are the only things that are moving and they're moving at multiple offers and, and above asking price in a lot of cases. These would be areas, we talked about this before. For example, the east of Sacramento, is there's an area called Folsom, El Dorado Hills, real high end area. People are migrating from the San Francisco Bay Area over here. It's about two hours away drive wise. Um, and they can get twice as much home for the same amount of money. Uh, it's more in nature, great views, less pollution, less people, you know, and so at the higher end, it's easy for someone to spend a million six on a home in El Dorado Hills when they just picked up $3 million from selling their home in San Jose. And you're, you're seeing that kind of thing go on too. That's not indicative of the overall general real estate market in the U.S. It is indicative of what we call hyper-localized markets. So the bottom line is I don't have a bottom line here. I, I, I don't have a great prediction anymore because there's as many talking heads predicting the market's going to drop as there is that it's going to, um, you know, go down, uh, I mean, go up. And uh, some of these guys are flip-flopping. But I think the most telling thing that I've seen is the fact that Zillow has decided to stop buying properties. Now, if they're making money buying properties and flipping properties like they've always made, there should be no problem with them continuing on. So one of two things has happened. either you know, their, their investors, their capital has fled and believes that it is not going to be a good market and has taken their money out so that Zillow has no funds to spend, or they know something that they're not telling everybody else. Um, and that, that thing I would predict would be the fact that their inventory is starting to stack up. They bought a lot of stuff. Uh, they bought 3,800 homes. They sold 2,600 homes and they made $170 million. So there's a thousand homes that got bought that didn't get sold. That's about 40% of what they bought. That's a lot, that's quite a bit. And you know, there, we may see a slowdown in the market. Maybe they're seeing it. They could be the canary in the mine shaft. Um, but it's interesting when you see three different networks put a completely different spin on this thing. Is it has to do with the fact that there's plumbing and steel shortages? Does it have to do with the fact they bought too much? Or does it have to do with the fact that, you know, so on and so forth? I mean, they, they all come up with different reasons. Uh, it just means nobody does know. The thing we do know, they're not buying houses. They've stopped buying for this year. So um, generally when the biggest in the market stops buying, it would be like Homes of America, which is one of the largest that buys rental homes. If they were to stop buying, that would be a, something we should focus on and keep our, our eyes and attention on. I'll let you guys know, as we always do, uh, as we get more information, more clarity, but I'm sticking with the, uh, what I've said before, this thing is all tied to not only the economy, but the, the cost and availability of funds. And if we continue as a government to print money and buy it ourselves and put it out there cheap, you know, home prices could go up more than they are today. Uh, but the minute they, they start indicating that they're going to raise rates, even if it doesn't gonna happen for six more months, if they say now, you know, in, by March, we're gonna be raising rates, that'll stop that thing just like that, I predict. So that's that's my prediction here on the 21st of October, 2021. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right, let's get on to the call. 